Hi and welcome, you excellent ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another rousing episode of Globe Trotting for Gossip. I'm your host Atul Mishra, and today we shall regale you with the most delightfully absurd happenings in the realm of international politics. We have an absolute smorgasbord of bewildering international incidents to share with you. First, we shall discuss the rather peculiar situation wherein the UK appears to have been inadvertently colonized by the Indian subcontinent with cricket and chicken tikka masala taking precedence over traditional British pastimes like following the US blindly. In addition, we'll explore the perplexing tale of radioactive games being played by this isle. Furthermore, we shall investigate the West's fervent desire to see Putin out of the world Tiddlywings organization, pardon me, I mean the World Trade Organization and the high stakes matches that have diplomats and heads of state in a tizzy. We shall also discuss the highly unusual public display of angst between Biden and Netanyahu akin to a pair of quarreling schoolboys. And let's not forget Ukraine's newfound admiration for Russia's aerial might, which has left many a European politician scratching their heads in confusion. We'll also touch upon Trudeau's rather theatrical green activism, which some claim is about as genuine as a $3 note. And finally, we'll examine Burkina Faso's resounding digitis medius to France, a gesture that has left the French political elite feeling rather miffed, to say the least. So settle in with your favorite cup of tea and join us as we navigate the gloriously absurd world of international relations. And as we navigate this wonderfully absurd world together, dear viewers, remember that laughter is the best diplomat. Pray, dear Maestro, could you regale us with a splendid composition to accompany our present merriment? What? I have my music, please. Belgian intelligence puts Huawei on watch list. Perhaps they'd prefer a more discreet partner for their covert waffle recipes. Nashville shooting spurs Biden's fight for assault weapon ban. Perhaps it's high time for a return to gentlemanly duels with pointy umbrellas. Biden and Netanyahu's frosty exchange over judicial reforms has set the diplomatic teacups rattling. But will they spill over? Only time will tell. Indian subcontinent has colonized the UK with people from the subcontinent occupying highest chairs in UK, Scotland and even Northern Ireland. Saudi Arabia has joined the SEO from oil rich sands to Beijing's embrace. A strategic tango has unfolded. Uganda resists Western LGBTQ advocacy, a uniquely Ugandan recipe for human rights, hold the woke. Burkina Faso has banned France 24 for terrorist interview, a diplomatic tussle over the airwaves. France is as respected in Africa as a mosquito is at a blood donor's gala. Ecuador's indigenous groups seek Lasso's impeachment. The presidential Lasso may have finally snagged its wielder. Ibero-American summit is an embarrassment for Spain. South American bigwigs ghost Spain's fiesta, leaving Paila to cool. Canada's income-based parking fines, a tier tariff for the effluent, park with care, settle with panache and curse your hard-earned cash. Trudeau's hotel choice for climate summit in Egypt turned out to be an ironic retreat. The environment checked in but never checked out. Khalistan calls Jagmeet Singh. Prime Minister Modi invites him too, but with a spiked bat. Our splendid, with the headlines duly dispatched, let us now embark upon the true heart of the matter, diving headlong into the veritable whirlpool of wit and whimsy that awaits us. Onward, dear viewers, to the main course of our scrumptious satirical banquet. The United Kingdom, that bastion of British sensibilities, has decided to bestow upon Ukraine a gift most curious, depleted uranium armaments, which one might say are akin to a radioactive fruitcake. A well-intentioned gesture, no doubt, but with the potential to cast a rather 
ghastly glow upon future generations as the echoes of the Yugoslavian conflict still reverberate through the memories of the afflicted, one cannot help but wonder if these modern-day knights in shining armor might have been better off gifting their Ukrainian friends a sturdy umbrella or a pot of soothing Earl Grey. But alas, in this age of international intrigue, it seems that the only tea being served is of the radioactive variety. The Russian bear has decided to station its nuclear-capable weapons in the charming land of Belarus. One might imagine this decision has ruffled more than a few feathers in Poland, which now finds itself peering nervously at the glowing picnic basket just across the border. Like a garden party where a surprise guest arrives with an armful of fireworks, Poland must now grapple with the existential conundrum of whether to double down on its anti-Russia rants or perhaps invest in a few stylish bomb shelters. In an unexpected turn of events akin to a gazelle complimenting a lion's running shoes, Ukrainian soldiers have begun to sing the praises of the Russian Su-35 jets. These airborne behemoths soaring high above the clouds have seemingly captured the admiration of those who should, by all accounts, be rather miffed at their presence. It's as if the humble hedgehog, when confronted by a swooping hawk, decided to pen a heartfelt sonnet admiring its feathered foe's aerial prowess. One can only speculate that perhaps these Ukrainian soldiers, dazzled by the Russian might in the air, have begun to entertain the notion of someday piloting these metallic steeds themselves, the day when Ukraine will join Mother Russia. In a curious game of international tug of war, the Western world, like an exasperated aunt attempting to evict a stubborn relative from a cozy armchair, has been endeavoring to pry Russia from the comfortable embrace of the World Trade Organization. However, much like that tenacious uncle who refuses to relinquish his spot by the fire, Russia clings steadfastly to the WTO, well aware of the economic benefits it enjoys under the organization's protective umbrella. The Western powers, like a gaggle of well-heeled seagulls, caw and flap their wings, hoping to startle their Russian counterpart into releasing its grip on the WTO fish. And yet, as the winds of trade blow and the squawks of indignation grow ever louder, Russia maintains its steely resolve, gripping the WTO with the unwavering determination of a beagle clinging to a prize slipper. Here's a small poem on the WTO situation. In the halls of trade and commerce, where nations meet and deals are made, there lies a curious tug of war, a conflict of economic trade. The West, like seagulls, coin cry as Russia clings to WTO. The golden fry of trade, it seems, is worth the squawk, the flap, the blow. Like uncles on a cozy chair, refusing to budge, they hold their ground. And though the winds of trades may blow, Russia clings steadfast, unbound. The United States, that most stalwart of nations, has decided to employ a bit of old-fashioned elbow grease in its efforts to prevent the passage of a UN Security Council resolution investigating the Nord Stream sabotage. It seems that the noble art of persuasion has been replaced by a more direct approach, like a sledgehammer in an operation theater. And because of the US's theatrics, the truth remains shrouded in a fog of uncertainty like a treasure buried deep beneath the waves. In a move that could be likened to a gathering of industrious ants working together to hoist a crumb of sugar, Bolivia has proposed the creation of an OPEC-like organization to oversee the management of lithium resources in the continent. While the creation of this organization may be a daunting task akin to building a towering anthill or navigating the labyrinthine pathways of a honeycomb, the potential benefits of a collective lithium strategy cannot be ignored. The winds of change blow strongly in Cuba as the re-election of Miguel Diaz heralds a new era of communist idealism mixed with capitalist ambitions. It's as if the ghost of Trudeau's dad, that icon of revolutionary fervor, has returned to whisper in the ear of Diaz, urging him to create a communist utopia unlike any other. And yet, 
Beneath this veneer of idealism, there lies a hint of something more pragmatic, more capitalist in nature, like a wily fox hiding amidst the brambles. The global de-dollarization movement continues to gather steam as Russia, India and five African countries are joined by Brazil and China in their efforts to ditch the dollar and trade in mutual currencies. For in the world of international trade, the rules are constantly shifting like a game of snakes and ladders with unexpected pitfalls and sudden advancements at every turn. It's like a dance with each partner seeking to lead to outmaneuver the other in a complex tangle of steps and spins. Ah, the curious machinations of Canadian politics, where the Inflation Reduction Act is like a madcap adventure through the wilds of economic theory. And yet amidst this chaotic landscape, Justin Trudeau continues to play his part like a bumbling magician performing tricks for a skeptical audience. It's like a comedy of errors with each new act more ridiculous than the last. And so we watch with interest as Canada enacts its Inflation Reduction Act, offering green subsidies to promote sustainability while inadvertently driving out the very companies Trudeau is trying to protect. In Canadian politics, parties are changing their names like a chameleon changes its colors. Saskatchewan Liberal Party drops liberal from its name like a caterpillar shedding its cocoon to become a butterfly. But will this transformation be enough to win over voters or will it simply be seen as a cheap imitation of the original Conservative Party? Christia Freeland might be a vile one, but she is cunning for sure. Christia Freeland is playing a part of an expert puppeteer pulling the strings of the budgetary marionette. It's like a magic show with each new trick creating the illusion of prosperity and progress. The new freebie-laden budget of Canada, courtesy of Freeland, is unveiled like a Pandora's box of promises. Will it be enough to fool the common Canadians into voting for Trudeau again? Or will they see through the smoke and mirrors to the truth behind the budgetary facade? Time judges every man and country equally except Greenland, it seems. The residents of Greenland have made a decision that will forever change the way time is kept in their land. The residents of Greenland have switched to daylight saving time for the last time and forever. May it be a wise experiment. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for today on Globetrotting for Gossip. We have covered everything from Africa, France, tussle to trade wars between the world's superpowers. But fear not, my dear audience, for as we always do, we have managed to find the silver lining in all of this chaos. We have seen how even the most powerful leaders can be brought down by the hook of a bra. How democracy can be both a blessing and a curse and how even in the darkest of times, there's always room for a good laugh. So until next time, stay tuned, stay informed and remember, no one makes mistakes, just happy little accidents. So let's all be optimists, shall we? Bye-bye.